I've always loved cars. I see them as more than just a status symbol. A car says a lot about who we are. Before I visited China, I wanted to talk to Jeffrey Sachs, one of the world's most influential economists, to get some advice on my China journey. I'll tell you, the, the most notable single thing is green license plates. Now, what does that mean? Electric vehicles. But it's an incredibly competitive sector right now. When you visit China, when you visit cutting edge enterprises, what you're seeing is rapid technological advance, lots of innovation. Is this true? On my journey of discovery, I hope to find out. The southern city of Guangzhou is a car manufacturing hub. Here, China's Mr. Car is waiting for me. Oh, this is the part of the trip I was really looking forward to, my chance to get behind the wheel of some of these EVs here in China. But what I wasn't told was that the budget is really, really small. This is all they could afford. It's one of these tiny EVs, but it does help you navigate some of these smaller roads, uh, which you find were really kind of jammed with cars. You can see one right over here. But at any rate, I'm on my way now to try some of these other really expensive high-end EVs. Nice to meet you, Mike. You can call me Sean. Hi, Sean. Yeah, my day job is I explain the Chinese car market to the world, and we've put together a lineup of cars for you to experience. Each is distinctive in their own way. Yeah, I can't wait. This is the SSR. Oh, man. And guess how much this car costs in China after tax? Uh, uh, I. 160,000. Oh, my gosh. So that sounds like a big price tag, but when you compare, this is full carbon fiber. You're paying for these really genuine right. supercar material and supercar performance. Right. Then this price seems like a bargain. You're going to have a go at this later. Wow, it's a beauty. Talking about your own car. Yeah. It's slightly it's, less it's, impressive. I was going to say, it doesn't cost as much, does it? <laughs> yeah. But this is the segment where China has the biggest advantage. It's super for the bank account, at least, right? Yeah, it's, and it's easy to park. Yeah. About the one behind you. Mm. This car is famous for its autonomous driving. We're going to go on the public roads later. Wow, I yeah. can't wait. And then we've got another one. Yeah. The big selling point of this car is that it can charge, but the killing point is it swaps. Oh, wow. OK, I can't wait, but can we start with this one first? Of course. All right. Let's try it. It's a lot of power. Wow, this thing is like a rocket ship. From zero to 100, this car on the right tire is under two seconds. <laughs> is your blood pressure OK? So quick to accelerate, too. It really is a supercar, too. Let me just see if I can sprint past everybody. Oh, my gosh, amazing. And there's still more to it. I mean, I can yeah, really. completely. Wow. As I said, to fully experience this car, you need to go to a track. Kind of driving slow, I don't want to give it up. <laughs> <laughs> we are now in the assisted driving mode. If you see this blue line appearing on screen, that means this vehicle is in control. We have camera vision on every angle. We have LiDAR to detect the distance. Put them all together, we put together a sensor system that is very robust all sides and way off in the distance too so you yeah. can see some it's just mind-boggling i know that this is normal for you but for a guy coming from the west who doesn't see this it's pretty amazing with this big suv it's luxurious it's very quiet it also has a very good sound system let's try the karaoke bit but to do that we need to park the car Chinese 
China's car industry wasn't always like this. 48 years after Henry Ford rolled out his first iconic Model T, China came along in 1956 with its first automobile, a truck. It was an astonishing milestone for China, but still left the country lagging far behind the rest of the world. Last time I was here in China was a few years back, and so driving on these roads with Sean is a new experience. All these beautiful cars with green license plates are a sign of how rapidly the EV industry is growing in China. So how did it happen? Sean tells me the first reason is the fierce, even cutthroat market competition. When Neil came out with, uh, with the highway assisted driving function, Xpon's users started basically at the founder of Xpon in WeChat. Oh, wow. Saying, how could you be beaten by that? Aren't you always famous for your like technology? The different thing between all of the Chinese car manufacturers is that all of the founders are still alive. When they want something, they will make it happen no matter what. It's this very in-your-face competition that's ultimately driving this industry forward. This kind of competition is putting pressure on the global automotive giants operating in the Chinese market, and that includes Volkswagen. This is the 40th anniversary of Volkswagen in China. The company has enjoyed huge market success while helping to pave the way for the Chinese auto industry to establish an international standard of manufacturing excellence, along with the supply chain that may well be the envy of the world. But in China's EV boom, the German teacher was kind of slow to react. Now Volkswagen is learning from its Chinese counterparts, and that's helping it develop its own EV technology. Nowadays, the more we, we go into e-mobility and connected cars, I would say it's more symbiotic. And for us, the relevant partners changed a little bit. It's not the partners building a factory, it's not more the partners about software, about autonomous driving, about uh, connectivity and infotainment systems. How marketing perspective? Shi Chang. Shi Chang Jiao Du. Great minds think alike. Uh, this is Qing Chang. No, Ying Xiong, Ying Xiong, so Jian Yu Tong. Ai. Dr. Gabardi's daily routine mainly consists of two things learning Chinese and managing Volkswagen's largest RD center outside of Germany. It's in Hefei, a city in middle China that you may never have heard of. You might ask yourself, why would an American come to Hefei? After all, most travel guides refer it as rural, rustic, but it's anything but that. In fact, Volkswagen has its second largest research and innovation center right here in Hefei, second only to the headquarters in Germany. So what is it about this city? What's the allure? We're about to find out. Before I talked to the CEO, Dr. Gabardi, about this, I decided to meet Sultana, a middle-ranking German manager who may just provide me with some answers. She's an outdoor enthusiast who enjoys finding a sense of balance with nature. She came here a few years ago when Volkswagen was setting up its EV joint venture in China. and I was watching you do your yoga and, and it's just like you're so free-flowing and kind of blending with nature and everything. Can you talk about this balance that you've found in your life both from a personal standpoint and a professional one? 
I mean, I'm very, very happy and proud that I'm, I'm part of the journey of Volkswagen producing NEVs now here. So because for me, it means also a step into sustainability. You've been here 18 years. What, what have you watched and what would you tell people who aren't really familiar with the China story when it comes to that? China has changed a lot um, during those 18 years. When I arrived here, say we had less cars on the street. And um, also when you see the cars, they have like unified shapes, yeah, quite squared and bulky and really like old school style. But now you have all this fancy stuff. Chinese people are not very afraid to try out new things. So, and this is for me like, so wow. <laughs> The fierce competition, the growing demand for a healthy and clean environment, and the Chinese appetite for new things are all helping the EV industry here to really take off. Walking around with Sultana, I'm struck by the city's vibrancy, its energy and bustle. Whoa. Very garlicky, sweet. Mm. See you. This is what attracted six automotive giants, including Volkswagen, BYD, and NIO to set up facilities here, along with 500 related suppliers. And who better to provide an insight into why a global industry leader has chosen Hefei and China than Dr. Gabardi, Volkswagen Onway CEO. Yeah, we go now to the um, to the body shop, which you will see. So, 1,200 uh, robot there, more or less highly one of the highest automated body shops in uh, China. You will see. Dr. Gabardi says it took just 18 months to create this fully upgraded facility from scratch. It is a stunning example of the breakneck pace here that's known as China Speed. This is just so amazing, they all kind of go in unison, right? It's like a symphony in a way when you watch it. <laughs> you see, it brings the parts, huh? Then wow. it comes in, fixation. And then the other thing about China is it, it's embracing. I mean, I, it's, it's hard for people to embrace change, but here it's embraced, it's celebrated. It, it, innovation just seems to be in the DNA. Yeah, innovation is definitely in the DNA. Especially in the electric cars now, because basically in the, in the things, software, connectivity, there is really um, a lot of innovative uh, passion here. It's so funny because we keep having these shadows. Absolutely, absolutely. Us. Maybe we let him go. <laughs> <laughs> right this way. Yes, exactly. I, uh, I feel like every time there's one behind us that I'm, I'm uh, delaying uh, production. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> The rapid innovation in the Chinese market acts as a driving force for global automotive giants like Volkswagen in actively enhancing their competitiveness around the world. I think in China there's a very interesting saying which is called Tian Shi Di Li Zhenhe, be at the right time, at the right place, with the right um, people. Even China itself was stunned by the speed of this transition. In 2020, China set a goal that in 15 years, more than half the cars sold would be EVs. But it took only four years to hit that target. That's right, China hit the mark in 2024, 11 years early. And if you think that's impressive, get this. By 2035, 90% of the cars on the roads here could be EVs. The Chinese auto giants have been moving with remarkable speed to develop EVs. Take, for example, the Guangzhou Automotive Group, GAC. The Fortune 500 firm zoomed past the 1 million mark in sales, making it the fastest growing EV seller on the planet. Now that I've had a chance to be behind the wheel of one of these cars, I've come here to the manufacturing facility itself to see how the magic is made. This is the world's only lighthouse factory for NEVs. Here, they've reached the pinnacle of global manufacturing intelligence and digitalization. 600 robots work in tandem according to precise procedures, and they do it with speed and agility. It's remarkable what they can do, 
There are more than 100,000 configuration combinations that can be realized on the same production line. From the initial steel plate to the final vehicle assembly, the entire process can be completed in just 16 hours. China's Jiangyu is the whole Asia's China's people are about 2.5 billion. So it's such a huge global market. 它很快就能把这个创新的成本给消化掉了，然后呢，我们这个规模大，制造业的规模就会跟着大。有人老说我们制造业是大而不强，我说大就是强，它把综合成本给压下来了，这个太重要了。How big and how strong? Keep in mind you're looking at the world's largest single market and the largest market for cars. It's an unbeatable combination that will keep these robots humming. It makes you think that the sky's the limit for China's EV industry. I met Xi Jiangmin, a veteran car engineer who's been working in the auto industry his whole life. He's now leading GAC's transformation from gasoline to electric. Wow. Secret. Wow. That's really cool. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. 作为中国的汽车人来讲的话，我从合资走到了自主，走到了今天，我才觉得，这是中国人自己在造自己的车，通过自己的核心技术、自己的自主知识产权来造车，而且走到了世界领先地位，应该是中国汽车人应该为之而骄傲的事情。But some skeptics are beginning to wonder if there's a saturation point for EVs in China. Now there seems to be these concerns from some about overcapacity, and I want to get your thoughts on that. Guangxian, last year, all the factories are full. The sales volume is the percentage of all the energy that I use. It's not going to go down. Then there's another problem. If you don't have a good product, or if you don't have a good product, or if you don't have a good product, then you won't have a good product. Your product will not be a good product. This product will definitely be a good product. 这不是一个产能过剩的问题，而是一个企业经营往前走还是被淘汰的问题。The world is clamoring for green products, but the demand remains largely unmet. China is an exceptionally good, highly competitive, low-cost producer of what the emerging economies of the world want. By the way, also what American consumers want. Spending time here, you can't help but think you're actually witnessing a revolution. Now, innovation is a buzzword, but not here in China. It's the marriage of efficiency, robots, technology, all of them fused together to create these new vehicles that are spreading out all across the world. 